Well, Patrick, it's it's not quite the 15 consecutive wins from the 1991 season after a slow start, but 11 out of 12 yes. after a 4-8 and eight start, and the Twins have the biggest division lead in all of... Uh, actually, I take that back. The Mets are now up 4.5 on the Marlins, but the Twins have a four-game lead and are six games above 500. Yeah, and uh, what? Uh, what? Only the second time. So the other what? When? Only the second time in thirty years they've done this. Something like that. Did I read that today? That are, what? That they've started this? This this good or the best in thirty years that they know that they've won ten out of eleven. They've uh, yeah. The, they haven't had any other eleven and one stretches in thirty years or something. So, yeah, it is unusual and. Uh, uh, the, the thing about it is they're figuring out different ways. They've done it with, uh, of course, very good starting pitching, and now they're doing it with some hitting. And then, you know, two nights ago, they they just they did a couple of things wrong and, uh, you know, missed some chances and still figured out a way to win it 2-1. to one. So uh, last night I thought the uh, interesting thing was uh, Theobar, who hasn't been good, was really good and got got what it got him four outs, right? So uh, mm-hmm. you you wondered how they were going to get to the finish line last night after Ryan gave him their his basically second mediocre start of the season, but they figured it out. And I owe apology to Griffin Jacks, by the oh, way, yeah. who, wow. hated, who all of a sudden is now throwing ninety five. Where did this mm-hmm. come from? I, somebody, uh, See, now, Judd, that's a man who can admit that he's wrong about a pitcher. He's apologizing, apologizing on the show. Oh, it's funny. Well, that's an early apology. My Dylan no, well, Bundy one's I, really pending. I'm not saying he's going to carry him to the home stretch. I'm just <laughs> saying that I thought he was, what in the hell is this guy doing on a team uh, kind of uh, uh, stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, – we're gonna we're gonna play that uh, three man. Uh, gonna have to go with that three man bench till the end of May, though, right? Because uh, we got the fourteen pitchers. You knew that was gonna happen. You knew they'd end up with a three man bench. You know who hasn't been bad for him? Gary Sanchez. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it, they basically they got him. Why do they want? Why do they want this waste? Uh, they'll get rid of him as soon as they possibly can. But uh, you know, there's the catching's just fine with those two guys neither of them is a fantastic but both of them are acceptable so that's that's okay uh and uh i i think that uh i think this the undercurrent of all of this is uh uh miguel sano might not have another 25 at bats with the twins before it's over it's a, it's a, this is the end this so have, have we figured out is it the short-term or long-term meniscus surgery has he decided yet uh I don't think the twins care, but if he wants to have the long term, <laughs> do what you if want. He wants to have the long term, then they'll send him to St. Paul for a while, and they will, uh, they will, uh, they'll owe him come June first. Let's they'll owe him nine million, counting the buyout. Yes, uh, I think what's going to happen in June, July, they're going to try to find somebody to give him a double A prospect, and they'll pay two thirds of it. You know, they'll pay. Somebody might have to pay damn near all of it to uh, to uh, get rid of him, uh, but I, I think it's over. I think it's Chris Davis, don't you? And, I think and here's the thing too: I think everybody, everybody out there, should be completely comfortable with this. Well, like, it's it. like this yeah, is no longer a. Tough he's not decision. David Ortiz. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And if there wasn't a better solution, but there is. Kirilov playing first, Arise mm-hmm. playing first, Miranda playing first, any Absolutely. one of these guys playing first. Now, we don't know if Miranda can hit or not yet, but there's certainly – he's certainly going to have a better chance to get a hit uh, than uh, Miguel Sano is right now. I, I just think that – I just think he's 29. You know, I think his birthday's uh, this – It's in May. Uh, th- this week, I think. Yeah. Maybe next week. And he just can't hit the – stuff they're throwing anymore i don't think he just can't hit that velocity got chris davis out of the league and uh you know he but baltimore had so much more invested in him they just kept running him they ruined three seasons just keep running them out there uh there's no reason to do that this guy doesn't uh you know what 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 is funny is last year he had a pretty good stretch but i i just think when you look at the future of the team kirloff larnick uh Miranda, he just they don't need him. They they don't need him and it's not worth the agony of uh and and isn't it 
Isn't it amazing that the dummy ended up getting hurt and tearing his knee, celebrating the fact that he was stupid, right? <laughs> that was, I mean, it was a celebration of stupidity, right? Running, running a guy off second base and having some catcher throw it over the third baseman's head and then acting like you did something. And it's, uh, that's, that's how it ends for him. It's, uh, where is he going to go down as you can't really call him a failed prospect, can you? Cause he, no, he hit enough, he hit home runs and yeah, he hit a hundred and some home runs, but it's, but from what we imagined, yes, he's from what we imagined the second coming of Harmon Killebrew, it certainly uh, came in a long, long way short of that. And much of it, he's got to blame himself. I mean, there was a couple of years when he was pushing 300 pounds and you just, he's not, he's a huge man, but he's not a 300 pound man. Yeah. No, I, it's, it's hard. I'm trying to think of other twins players that, I mean, there's been guys that didn't quite live up for whatever reason, you know, Jason Kubel, but, but his knees yeah. were shot. Yes. You know, pretty young but, in his career. But not with the build up that this guy had. Not no. Like the build up right. that this guy had. And really the build up only exists for like the last 15, 20 years, maybe in terms of like, you know, prospect yeah. rankings yeah. and yeah, that's true. You're right. Yeah, we did. We didn't. We got our Judd is old enough to remember this that on the, the Sunday newspaper ran the minor league stats on, and most of them, and they submitted it to the newspaper on Tuesday. Yes, Min, Minnesotans in the minors. Yes, how sports bureau. Yes, yes. submitted them on and, Tuesday. You yep. know, and if you wanted to know how the minor league team was going in the 1990s, still you had to buy sporty news. You know, you know what? So I'll tell you, even as a kid, so I remember my dad would take me to go for baseball games all the time, and I would get like autographs from go for yeah. baseball players. And then I remember getting an autograph from Shane Gunderson one time. Yes. In like 1998 or something, <laughs> yeah. and I and so I would open the newspaper throughout yeah. his I don't know five-year yeah. minor league career and see, oh, he's, he's hitting 200. It's great. Yes. Yeah. That, <laughs> I wonder what happened to that guy who did that, man. John, that, that, the fellow who did that was, uh, the, each state's players in the minors, he had a pretty good going for like, yeah, but, oh, uh, it was a, a Bible. Years and 50 yeah. years. He hung on desperately at the end, even, well, even, uh, you know, it, through the nineties, uh, Glenn Trevier was our sports editor. He was, dead set set on having that in the paper but you don't need it anymore you can watch the game if you want to and you can find out what a guy did two minutes ago so. i think the thing i think the ultimate thing the telltale sign about sano's career and this was early but i think it's important is when terry ryan and the boys decided we're going to move him to right field because that's going to spark his ass. Yeah, like that's, yeah. that's going to get him. And that's he, right. And, I forgot about and, that. And as Royce, said from being down in, in the fort at the time, <laughs> it didn't exactly work. And I think that was the beginning of, I'm only going to do so much to achieve the potential that these guys think. And so it sort of came and went until it just completely went. Yeah. I uh, spent about, he was, I saw Oswaldo uh, Arcia working with him one day <laughs> out in left field. Blind teaching leading him, the blind. <laughs> teaching, him you, teaching him how you cross, make a crossover step when you go chase a ball. And, you know, you got you to gotta be able to launch yourself to some degree to chase the ball. You can't just, you know, turn and run. And that was Ozzy Arcia. And then he, then he had to go back to New York for a family funeral or some damn thing. And they didn't see him again for two weeks, but about four days later, Brad style was on the MLB network, you know, in the morning show. And I happened to see him saying, yeah, he's down there working every day. We got him working with our trainers and, you know, Brad style seemed like a nice young man. And I was surprised that he was such a blatant liar. <laughs> we, we, in, a, in others, I suppose he didn't want to go on there and say, we don't know where the hell he is. We don't know why we're doing this. We, we did this because we got to get one whole park in the lineup, right? Wasn't that right, Byung, Byung Ho Park. Oh, man, yeah. this is a this is a trip down <laughs> Twins Futility Lane here. Yes, yes, it was. So here's, all right, here's a question for you because – Royce Lewis is is tearing it up for the Saints right now. Yes. He's got an OPS over a thousand. He's batting 300, 440 on base. Are, That's fine. 
So yeah. you're so let's say he keeps tearing the cover off the ball for another month. Do you find somewhere for him? Do you find well, I don't, third it, base or? It, it depends. Uh, I don't think there's any rush just because of the lack of at bats he's had in his minor league career, and you know he's going to be a shortstop next year. So I want him. I want him playing shortstop every day and proving to me he's a shortstop. That's what I want. I don't want to play him at third and someplace. I think it's more important to have him be the third base, the shortstop of the future. Because no matter what Carlos tells you about how much he enjoys Minnesota, he leaving, folks. There's yeah. no doubt about it. He leaving. And uh, <laughs> and 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 Royce Lewis and and by the way, Scott Boris has an idea for them. You can have my guy Royce Lewis to be your shortstop next year. That uh, was part of the whole sales thing. And I think we should all be uh, delighted that Royce Lewis is playing well and showing that he can handle AAA and is healthy rather than worry about whether they should get him in the lineup here, especially because Ursula, to me, is a better player than I thought he was, even though I had a little slump just now. And let's see if Miranda can hit because, uh, you know, he's – he, he, he did some serious hitting last year, hit uh, 30 some home runs, hit 350 in two different places. And uh, and I think he might be the weapon you need against left handed pitching. Plus, you got to, if Kirilov's wrist is okay, you got to get him in the lineup. I don't care if he isn't. I'd rather have Sano. I'd rather have him batting against left handed pitching than Sano, right? Yeah. So, what difference does it make if he's left handed or not? He's He can hit when he, if he ever starts playing, he can hit. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's any reason to rush Royce Lewis at all. But in the modern uh, era of social commentary, they'll, the people say, ah, why don't they have Royce Lewis up here again? Correa will have, Correa will have three straight bad days. Trade Correa and get Royce Lewis up here. Yeah, no. <laughs> if, 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 if Lewis, if you find space for Lewis, it's not going to be at shortstop or second base. Not, I know they were playing him in center field for a while. It's not going to be in center field. It would basically be left field, or if Miranda's not sticking, maybe you pl- maybe you put him in at third base or DH once in a while. It's a good give, problem uh, to Jorge, have. They got to give Jorge a new contract here uh, pretty soon, don't they? Is this his last? Him and year? Kepler are up after yep. next year, I think. Yeah, or Jorge's the guy you might want to extend next start of next year for about three more years. Let him mm-hmm. play till he's about thirty-five. He's uh, it's funny him and Sano, man. Grew up together, lived a, what a mile apart. Uh, now they're not; they're very different personalities. Well, yeah, one but, of them one of them is dedicated to their craft and yeah. grinds and stays in elite shape. And yes, yeah. yes, but uh, it is funny that and from that group that they got signed, and you know, Kepler and uh, Polanco, who was the third guy as far as getting money and stuff, and not quite as built up, has turned out to be the real player. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, now Joe Ryan uh, not too real, not real good last night. And now we'll see how his bounce back game goes. I'm not, I'm not really worried about him. He's, uh, I think he's uh, got the uh, attitude of, man, eh, we'll get him next night. So uh, yes, we'll, we'll find that out though. That's the one test of. I've mentioned that. That's the one test of of uh, young pitching is how do I do when I'm not really getting them out. So. Mm-hmm. Hey Patrick, did did you you see playoff hockey in all its glory last night? Not one, not two, but triple overtime, Rangers and Penguins, baby. What'd you think of taking that goal away? Uh, I thought it was very. Away? Yeah, I did, and I thought it was questionable because the defenseman he, the did shove pushed, the guy in. The guy got yeah. pushed in, and here's my theory: if you're refereeing a hockey game and you got a chance to get one team ahead late. You got to let them have the goal because <laughs> you don't want to play for, if I'm a ref, I don't want to be out there for another two hours for God's sake. Looks good to us. See you guys. Yeah. 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 Looks, yeah. Upon further review, it's a goal. Yeah. yeah. We gotta, he's got his luggage. Back, they should have came <laughs> back a the second of the overtime and second overtime and said, we've looked at it again. It was a good goal. That's we all. have a good goal. We're, we're over. Two hours later, we have a good goal. Holding his boarding pass. How about, (laughs) I watched a little of, just a very little bit of the, uh, of of Ovechkin and the fellas. 
Yeah, he looks like Grandpa, doesn't he? Just he lo- he's very big, gray. This big yeah. fat bear waddling <laughs> up and down the, the ice, but he scores goals and does stuff. He's unbelievable, but he's he looks like he's in as good a shape as Sano, for God's sake. He's lived a good life too, my man. Yeah. <laughs> that he's living a good yeah. life. You know, yeah. it's I feel like most of the the great thirty six year old athletes or whatever age he is, like they look like Tom Brady now, right? They look yes, you know, right. yeah. Steph Curry still <laughs> looks like he's twenty two yeah. years old. Ovechkin looks like one of the athletes from the 1960s that's in yes, his mid 30s. George Bland, a little yeah. gray. He did this big bear, and I, I saw a picture of him the other day. There was some shot of the, the team, and I said, "Who's that?" I said, "My God, it's Ovechkin. He's 60." <laughs> <laughs> but it's is that Ovechkin's Howard dad. Who is that? <laughs> yeah, but they won too. How many road teams won yesterday? Uh, so, uh, Pittsburgh won. Washington won. What, what was the other? Um, Calgary was uh, at home, and they, they won. won. And Colorado, Colorado killed Nashville, Nashville at home. Nashville, Nashville, yeah. What was it, 7-2? to two? But I think it? right now it's 4-4, four and four, right? Four road teams, four home yeah, teams. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. yeah. So it's the NHL. We have, I'm reading this morning's Star, Star Tribune, though. We have Lavelle E. Neal III's guarantee that the, uh, that the Wild win tonight. So that should make you all feel better. Wish I felt as good. I feel like Lavelle is encroaching on our Wednesday prediction right this day. segment. There, we're gonna yes. we have to maybe put that on the record for Lavelle. And uh, as I say, uh, you know, that's fine, but it means nothing. Such guarantees mean nothing, ladies and gentlemen. We all know what's going to happen in sports, unless it doesn't. That's, yep, uh, that's uh, that's <laughs> that's my theory of life. As so. the three of us learned in our accountability session, predicting Vikings draft things. Oh. <laughs> God. Hey, I got to tell you, I went to this, uh, there's this picture I wrote about him today from Carleton uh, down here college, who's got amazing stuff and he's going to end up transferring to some West Coast Division One school. And Brian Robbie told me about him from Bethel. So, so I went to watch him and the, the highlight of the day is, you know, where that parking lot is? Did you ever play in parade? Yeah. Uh, state, uh, ballpark? Yep. The Phil? I, yep. I I did right not there. Know. Well, the right lot there. is right behind the yeah. right the the first base foul territory. Some guys out there, he's got a beautiful new Mustang, man. It's uh, like a black. It, it looks did. looks wonderful, and it's about four rows back, which isn't enough. But you hear this crash of glass, like oh. somebody was right next to you. And what's amazing that was his he wasn't parked with his with his he was parked facing the stadium, not away. So the ball managed to come right down on the edge of the roof, right at the end of the roof, big oh. hole in it, and an auxiliary hole in it. And and it still was sitting there later that my guy must have went out and looked at it and said, Well, what the hell? Now Never. that I got that, I had no sense of moving it. Amazing. Pat, I always every time I played at parade and then even at home at Tony Stone at Dunning in St. Paul, I, yes. I never did any. I never. I parked my car as far away as possible <laughs> to avoid the first baseline fouls. I, I saw it. I saw Dave Winfield pitch a couple of times at Dunning. Yeah. When he was pitching, you could uh, you could park your car right up there in the front row because it was all strikeouts. So uh, you yeah, know, the other team <laughs> might hit the ball, but. Uh, it was uh, Dunning. Is uh, have they spent any money on Dunning? How's Dunning looking? Uh, they, they kind of. They need to still update the dugouts. Those are prone to flooding. Uh, mm. The and and they've done some updates behind uh, uh, the plate, like in the grandstand, a little bit. I went up those old wood steps that make a couple yeah. of turns at parade to get the lineups. <laughs> I was never so ter. I was okay going up. <laughs> I was never so terrified in my life coming down. <laughs> Freak. Know, one little miss. First of all, you can die. You could die from slivers. You know, you could get like you could cut an artery with some slivers from the uh, from those hands if you're using. Oh God. They have uh, with the state of uh, the uh, city of Minneapolis hadn't spent a lot of money on the ballpark. Those have been there but, for thir- thirty plus years at least. Yeah. Yeah, that they haven't done they, thing it, with that. Now they a long time ago, but when did they tear down a football stadium? Nineties, right? 
90s? Yeah. Parade. Parade. You, you realize that when the Great concert, state yeah. football tournament started yep. in the 70s, yep. that's where they played the games. Wow. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, that was where the state championship, that, that place held a lot of people. The Vikings played an exhibition game there once. Yeah, I, be- I believe in the 70s there was a Simon and Garfunkel concert there. I think Elvis Costello played there. Wow. Nice. That used to be a happening Atomic place. Man. Yes. Yes. I don't know where you parked, but it was a happening place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That was, I mean, that I have no idea problem. where they put all the cars. Yeah. yeah. That, that was a problem for sure. So. All right, Pat. All we right, got the, we, we, we got the Vikings schedule trickling out. We'll, we'll do the full schedule oh. next week, but they're playing London. in London. I think. Vent line from London would be a hell of a good idea. Jolly good hoe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get surly on that London. for us. The way things are going with our internet hits, let's do it. Come on, YouTube from London to think all we're, the hits. And we're huge there, Pat. I know you are. We're big, big in London. You got some uh, people checking in from London? We legitimately have a lot yeah. of fans in Europe, yeah. Maybe the yeah, guy yeah, will yeah, let you stay in his house. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your guys can, we stay, can we stay in your loft? Thank you. It's not a bad idea, to be honest. You know, that'd be fun to go and uh, see the Viking fans. I, when they're more meandering, meandering around Tampa, I'm not that impressed. But to see them meandering around London might be kind of fun. Be a blast. Yeah. And they get they didn't lose a home game. They got nine home games. Yep. And only seven true road games. Yeah, Packers so, Packers are playing in London and they're taking a game away from Lambeau to play in London. Yeah, people advantage, another advantage for the Vikings. She's not happy, happy with that. that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. The only disadvantage we have is the quarterback's a loser. <laughs> all right. See you. See all you get. Just so much Kirk negativity all the time. Yes. So so much Kirk negativity. All right, that's wrapping with Roycey, Score North YouTube channel, Mackie and Judd.